That's great. All right, we're here putting in cabinets today. We've got our nice white shaker cabinets we're gonna put in. What we're gonna do first is find all of our studs where the cabinets are gonna go. We're gonna mark them on the wall. After we do that, we're gonna find, we're gonna set up a laser. We're gonna find our high point on the floor. So like most of our cabinets are over here. And then we have a little bench here that we're gonna build ourselves. And then we have a, like a big wall cabinet here. So like if the high point is here, I'm gonna have to start from here. Else my, if I do crown molding or something, it's not really gonna line up. So like I, I wanna find my high point in this whole room and then I'll work off of that. Uh, so we'll do that. I like to take all the cabinet doors off. It makes it easier when putting them up, especially the top cabinets. Some people like to start on the wall cabinets first because you're not working over their base cabinets. But I always mess it up when I do the wall cabinets first. I always end up having to move them or something, whatever. So. For this small of a kitchen, I'm just gonna do the base cabinets first and then do the wall cabinets second. Give us the general layout of this kitchen. It'll be uh, kitchen sink, dishwasher, base cabinet, wall cabinet, stained up cabinet, you wanna call it that. This will be a blind corner. So we couldn't get a lazy Susan in this corner because it would have bumped our cabinet out too much for the center of this window. So you put a blind, Blind, the blind cabinet, they call it, whatever you want to call it. It's basically just a rectangle, and you'll only be, you'll only be able to open this door, and you'll be able to get into that corner. That's about it. So then we'll have our stove, another cabinet, and then we'll have over here our fridge, our top, top cabinet. So it's a pretty small kitchen. Screw length I have to figure out. So our walls, they put like half inch sheetrock and plastered over it, so it's kind of like a three quarter finish, like three quarter depth wall. And then we have we only have furring strips behind it. So the furring strips are about three quarters, the wall is about three quarters to five eighths, and the cabinet I think is about three quarter. So really we're gonna want like two and a quarter screws, something like that. I got two inch screws. I'd rather not be too long because if it if I go through the furring strip, it's gonna pull off the wall when it hits the center block. Alright, another thing you have to do is lay it out on the walls, make your marks on the walls to show you where the cabinets are going. So I got my center, center for the window. It's a 36 inch sink base, which will bring me to the edge of this window. And then I got a blind corner here, but the cabinet, the blind corner, which is right there, <clears throat> is 42 inches long ways. But my top one, I'm gonna have a 24 in the corner and then I'm gonna have a 21 at the top, which equals out to 45. So instead of slamming my blind corner all the way in this corner, I'm gonna have to hold it off. Three inches. Three inches. Because this base is gonna have to line up with the edge of this because my microwave and my stove is going here. Another thing you wanna do is take your level, run it on the inside corners. See which one, see if it's perfectly uh, plumb or if it's out a little bit. So right now, it's telling me the bottom is kicked out this way a little bit. So when I get my measurements, I'm gonna measure off that bottom corner, go to 24 here, and I'm gonna plumb a line all the way up. And then I'm gonna go 24 plus 21 is 45, so I'm gonna go 45 from here, plumb a line all the way up. So that way, when I get up here, this cabinet's gonna be slammed in here, it's gonna be off a little bit, and then it's gonna line, this one's gonna line up plumb with that. So you, you have to look at your corners and kind of lay it out on the wall too. All right, so like I was saying earlier, we found our, how long our screws are. We want two inch screws uh, for this installation. No, nothing longer than that. Normally you want a little bit longer, but like I said, we only have three quarter, three quarter furring strips back here, so that's what we're gonna get. Why do they have furring strips instead of studs? Explain so that to built, everybody. This house is built out of cinder blocks, so they never built studs in front of it, they just built furring strips in front of it. Okay. So, Rich comes around here, he's gonna show you, there's parts of these cabinets particularly that are very thin here and then they have a backing here so when you put your screws in you're going to want to power hole through one of these backings you don't want to put a screw through here because it's going to suck the cabinet so we'll put it through here make sure our, our pile you know where our screws are will line up through there so i got my measurements i got a mark here so i'll probably do you know four screws here two on this side because it lined up with that stud 
two on that side lined up with that stud. So what I'll do is I got a pilot bit, I'll pilot it in first, and then I'll screw it in. The so they do make um, special bits that are like they'll countersink the head, but at least for attaching to the wall, you don't really need that. If you really want to, you can get them for it when you attach them together. But neutral bits are good enough for me. I did live, I wanted to put my blind in first. I'm gonna start with my sink base because I know my sink base has to go completely center. It's easier to work off that corner, which is also the high corner, but it's easier to work off that right in this instance. Now I'm gonna get ready to put my sink base in. I gotta drill the holes, so I measure it off, left to right, front to back. Uh, we got a two inch pipe coming up, so I'm gonna put a two and three quarter hole saw in. And we got half inch packs and a couple of electric, you know, electrical lines. So I'll do one inch holes for them or inch and a quarter holes for them. So I measured that out. Now I'm gonna come in, draw up my cabinet. All right, we got our filler piece here. We took our measurement, it was two and seven eighths. We ripped our filler piece down to two and seven eighths. This is a 30 inch filler piece that comes with the cabinets. So anytime you buy cabinets, it's generally coming with filler pieces, right? Yeah. Um, we got a long filler piece for our stand up cabinet thing over there, but they come with 30 inch fillers for the top and the bottom. Here, we're gonna screw it into uh, these doors. Like, we're gonna screw it through here into the filler and, and probably on the back side of here into the filler. Obviously you want it lined up. We got our um, clamping, clamping it together. We have this screwed right now, but you wanna make sure the front is nice and flush. And also with this one, since it's a blind, you wanna put a speed square in there. Make sure you're nice and square, square which we're damn freaking close. So we're gonna take a pile bit first now that we're lined up. Make sure you're perfectly straight here. I'm gonna pile our bits. I always like to get fresh drill bits with these cabinets because for some reason these cabinets are kind of tough. Then we take a bit that's a little bit bigger than the screw head, attach that, so we recess the screw head a little bit. They make drill bits for that, but I ain't spending that kind of money. We get our two and I think these are two and three eight screws. So, you know, this is inch and a half. You want to be three quarters in. So you want to be like two and a quarter screw. Use these screws because I just found that a sheetrock screw will break off pretty easy inside your filler piece and then you're really pissed off. Did I come out the back side? Did you? Yeah. That ain't good. I felt like the screw broke off in there. So, I've learned to use these ones. So what I like to do, especially on the base ones, I like to get one, two, three screws going. So we got them three. I got two on this back side. Good enough for a nice filler. Uh, so we're gonna keep moving on with the cabinets. We're setting the top cabinets now. I'm gonna start, I'm starting on this corner. We put this two by four up at our level line. For the back splash height, I did, on, I did 20 inches on this one. Uh, you always gotta check what size height cabinets you have, your, your opening up top. I wanted to do like 21, but I got this free crown molding that's, I think it's like five and a half or something. At that point, you'll have a little bit smaller of a gap up there because we're gonna let the crown molding fly up here. It's not gonna touch the ceiling. I only put it at 20, 20 inches to let it fly a little bit lower for dust control or whatever you wanna do later. Um, How thick's our countertop gonna be? Inch and a half. Okay. So an inch and a half, 20 to the bottom of our cabinet. Okay. Also, sometimes it's nice to see what backsplash you have. If your backsplash is three inch subway or something, you might wanna go 21. Or right. Because then it's, or even. well, it's not gonna be even in 20 because you have grout, depending on what, whatever. So you get what I'm saying. You wanna check your backsplash light. There's all kinds of variables here. We only have 30 inch wall cabinets. We don't have to be too concerned about it. I did a 20 inch backsplash, 18 is minimum. 18, in my opinion, is a little tight, but it works. So I went 20. And then we put this two by four on, hung this one. Now we gotta put this one, this next one, which is a 21, which should line up perfectly with the edge of this. 
and then we go 30 from here, which is our stove opening. We have a base here and a top there. We'll also have a small one here for our microwave, you know, above our microwave. We'll pre-drill our holes first and then throw it up. There's a couple options you can go with. You can screw through this top part right here. So you hide the screw and screw through the bottom part. You'll still see that one. Or you can go inside and screw and line it up with where your shelf's going to go. That way it kind of hides the screw. But the problem is with these cabinets, they're not really solid backing. So I'd rather be up top and down low. That way I'm not sucking the cabinet in when I do it. So in this instance, we'll probably just go up top and down low. Most of it done, a lot of most of it around here. We got our kitchen sink, our dishwasher, our stove, microwave. We got our fridge here. We did a little rigging for the fridge, <laughs> um, but it looks pretty decent, especially once the fridge goes in. We're gonna have, we're gonna have to build a bench here, and then we got our little corner cat, you know, corner cabinet, stand up cabinet. It looks a little off right now because there ain't no bench, but once you throw the bench in there, it's gonna pop. <laughs> So that's pretty much it right now. It's gonna we look probably nice. order our countertops now too. Yeah. If we want to, going pretty well. All right. John, how many things did you teach Mike today? I think like three or four. Three or four things. Yeah. <laughs>